Good morning. Ellis has his suitcase. He's rolling to the van. It's five o'clock in the morning. And he almost knocked over the crew. Oh, there goes Winnie down with the count. We woke up very, very early. Woke up very early. Ellis kept waking up like every hour, making sure I was not going to forget. Tired? Tired? Go go sleep on the airplane? Go get a coffee at the airport? Okay. Hi Ellis. Hi. Hi Summer. Hi. Hi. You guys ready to go on vacation? Yeah. But these boots are not. But these boots are not made for walking? Yeah, because they're not comfy. Mm-hmm. We got our rental car. <laughs> Fits all of us perfectly. Snug as a glove. We were supposed yeah. to have one extra seat. We were really? supposed to have like a suburban, but we have a car and we're all in here. You have a seatbelt. And it's raining. River. Hi, Winnie. All right, I'm back at the rental car place because uh, they wanted us to have something bigger. We all fit in this one, but we ordered the biggest possible because we knew we had so many of us. So he actually called back, they were so nice, and um, asked if we'd be willing to come back and get the biggest one. So they now have it available for us, so we're gonna go get it. So let's hope this goes well. Hey everybody, I don't know what, <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know what this camera angle is, but I, I didn't have a safe space to film. The kids are in each of their rooms. The living room, I just can't get a comfortable position. And so I'm in 
Jenny and I's room and kind of in the same spot where she filmed one of her first videos where she said that she had cancer and she was 33. She filmed it in this corner. Um, so I'm just popping back on to give another update. Um, I gotta say that um, I feel very mentally unwell. Um, grief is really hard. I feel really unwell. Um, what I mean by that is um, I never expected this to be easy. I never expected this to be normal. Um, but uh, I just miss everything about my wife. And it just seems to get stronger every day. Um, man, I just really miss her. <sighs> There's a... Uh, Kind of a pressure with grief and it's not so much you need to start doing better now it's only been weeks but on how you grieve how you mourn how you're coping how you struggle everybody's different in how they do it right and everybody has the right to do and mourn whatever way they have to, as long as it's as healthy choices as you can make. But I have found myself shutting off. Just shutting off. Not wanting to have a conversation. Not wanting to text back. Just wanting to shut off. And that doesn't mean stay in bed all day and not parent. I don't have an option there, right? Um, I'm parenting my kids the best I can and taking care of them and feeding them and bathing them and um, making sure they're getting through their days as well. But I know myself. I know me. Um, and the easiest thing for me lately has just been to shut off. Um, tonight's been particularly hard, which is why I picked up the camera. That's what Jenny always told me to do. Um, every song that plays just reminds me of her. I opened up uh, hundreds of cards that many of you sent in the P.O. box. I haven't even checked it in a week and a half. I'm sure there's more, but uh, they're all so kind. But then it's also reminding me um, this is just really hard. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. And Jen told me, if you don't know what to do, pick up the camera and talk about it. Because there's other people going through this. how to do it. I don't know how to do this.
This is so hard. And a lot of people have asked how I'm doing. I'm not doing okay. I'm not. I'm not doing okay. I'm not. Um, as far as <coughs> getting through my daily tasks, I'm okay. As far as taking care of my kids, I'm okay. Um, but as far as the grief aspect, <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. So, um, I made a promise tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday. So I'm going to wake up make some breakfast, and we are going to all go to church, like we did before Jenny got sick. And we're just going to go, and uh, have no expectations, just go. Um, normally the kids go into like these uh, little Sunday school areas, but I have a feeling they won't want to. I don't care what they want to do tomorrow, is they want to sit with me if they want to go, whatever makes them happy. I just want to be there, um, just be surrounded by that. We're going to do that, um, and then uh, I booked uh, Disneyland, so I don't know, maybe we'll do that, maybe we won't. I just did it because I was really sad, looking for something. Um, I think a lot of what's triggering maybe is the, obviously the first holiday without her. It was a lot harder than I thought. Um, we decided to pick up and go to Oregon for Thanksgiving because we were originally planning on doing that um, before everything happened. Um, and coincidentally, Jenny's doc doctor denied her that trip. Um, now we know why. Um, I'm glad because she, it would have been hard for her, really hard for her. But um, going up to Oregon is... Uh, you know, my therapist and I talked that it might be hard because that was Jenny's, um, that was her, that was her paradise, her spot. And, um, it really broke me on another level. Um, you saw before leading into this video some footage. That's all I filmed of the whole, we were there for a whole week. That's all I got. I'm not as good as Jen at picking up the camera and just filming and I'm so thankful to uh, Jenny's best friend for still taking us in and cooking and cleaning and I just love her kids so much. Um, they brought me out of a lot of sadness, you know, my kids and their kids and reading to them and playing with them and it helped. Uh, but every moment where I would step out and see the porch swing where Jenny and I would sit on. Or the spot on the couch that her and I would sit on. Or, um, just missing her presence in the room. It broke me. Um, I told her best friend that I'm sorry for... This is hard, a lot harder than I thought. She said it was for her too. Um, it'll never stop me from going there. You know, my kids um, love them so much. I love their kids so much. I love being around their family. And it's a promise I made to myself and to Jen to keep that relationship going. And I'll never stop as long as they'll take me. Um, just love them too much. But it was... It was shattering, man. Being there. Everything reminded me of her. We had a lot of memories there. And, um... Just really hard. Um, we all tried to be as normal as possible. It was hard. Um... I think that was harder than we thought. And then being home, I made a promise that I will not
crumble. I won't. I can struggle, I can be uh, miserable, I can be sad, but I won't crumble and fall. I won't do it. Because I have the kids, I have my animals, I have myself. I gotta stay strong. So that's what I'm trying to do. You know, this morning the kids and I went out for an, a little outing, came home. Um, I cooked or made a nice lunch for them and then we ordered dinner out. Um, it was a nice evening, but I just almost feel like I'm acting, <sighs> just acting, just putting on a show every minute. <sighs> it's exhausting. And then when the kids go to bed, I just feel so alone. So sad, so heavy. <sighs> so the kids are okay. Um, this week was really nice for them. Ellis tends to disappear when we go to Oregon. He blends right into the family and says, see you later, dad. Um, he did that most of the time, which was great. That meant to me that he was doing well. My daughter clung to me like <laughs> she's never clung. Like anywhere I went, she went anywhere. If I was gone for five minutes doing something, she was asking everyone where I was. She struggled and she told me multiple times how much she missed mom, <laughs> which is good. You know, I want her to say it. I want to say it. Um, but it's sure hard being in mom's paradise without mom. <sighs> Tonight's been rough. The kids, <laughs> Ellis fell asleep and when he fell asleep in the living room, basically like on my lap, um, <laughs> which was nice. Then I had to put them to bed. Um, opened up a lot of your cards, read those, those are so sweet. And here we are. Last night I didn't go to bed. We got home from the airport at about 10.30. I put the kids down to bed and then I you know, went on my phone, searched things, looked up videos, watched a movie, and then, you know, before I know it, it's like five in the morning, six in the morning, and then tried to close my eyes, and then the kids are up at like 7.30 or 8. I don't know. It's not healthy, but I don't know. I just don't know. Um... Jenny's service will be, um, I know most of you saw, um, Jenny's service will be at the end of the month, um, and we will put it on here live, um, more announcements to come, so just, just be around YouTube so I can let you guys know a specific time so that you can turn it on whatever time that is in wherever you are, so I know we have people in South Africa, England, um, just other states in the United States, so um, it'll be important to let you guys know when that exactly is going to be. I will. Um, one thing I was going to just throw out there, some people have asked, you know, what they could do. One thing that I think would be pretty special is in front of our house, we have a good amount of painted rocks that people did for Jenny at one point. Um, and so we're almost making it like a little memorial for Jenny in front of our house. Um, so we ordered this special sign that says Jenny's, uh, rock garden. And then we got a little memorial plaque. Um, so if you feel inclined to send anything to our family, cause a lot of you have been so generous, um, I would love to add to Jenny's rock garden. She had a dream of making it huge. City of Hope, her hospital has a huge one. And it could be anything. It could be, 
you know, you could paint a ladybug, you could paint a smiley face, you could paint an angel, you could paint nothing. You could just write your name on it. It doesn't matter. Especially if you knew my wife. She would love anything. Let a kid scribble on it. It doesn't matter. But I think it would be amazing to see, maybe make it bigger and add to it. So, if you do want to send anything, you could send that to the P.O. box. It would make me so proud. And if we got some more and it got bigger, I would film it and show you guys kind of the impact you have. And then I'll show it with the new sign we got and the little memorial plaque. It should be cute. It was um, her sister's idea too, and um, I like it. So I was just going to throw that out there because a lot of people are asking what they could do. And that would be so special if someone in your family could paint a rock or you or a kid um, or just ride on a rock or anything send a beautiful rock, whatever, and um, I'll add to her little memorial rock garden. I think that'll be pretty. Um, yeah, I think that's the only reason I came on, was to say that I am absolutely struggling. I'm just airing it out. It feels good to air it out. It's like therapy. Jenny would always take to the camera anytime she was feeling real dark. Um, so me too. Um, I also want to extend my gratitude for all of you, for the cards and the messages, um, reaching out in any shape, shape or form that you have. Obviously I don't see all the messages, but, um, or comments, but, um, and all the cards and everything. I just appreciate you guys for sending nice things to my kids, for sending thoughtful gifts ornaments for the tree, hand me, you know, you guys are just doing such sweet things. I just want to extend my gratitude. Um, I haven't been able to do that in a while. It's been, I think, a week since I filmed last. Um, I'm definitely going to do a couple things this week. I have goals this week of um, find some kind of support group of some sort. I really, really need a group of anybody who is or has gone through this because it seems absolutely unbearable. I always knew how much I loved my wife. I always knew it. I'd tell everyone. And I always knew how special she was. I would also tell everybody. I'm glad that the world got to see a little bit of it too. But, um, I feel like a piece of my soul has been ripped out. Just stomped on. I miss her so much. Love is pretty powerful, man. It's so powerful. It's such a strong, strong feeling. And in grief, it doesn't go anywhere, it just kind of builds. I, uh, I'm waiting for the day I have an in-depth dream where she's in it. I still haven't had that. There's been little spurts where she's shown up a little bit in a dream, but nothing. I want one where I'm like fully having a conversation. Many people have told me to hug my Jenny pillow. I have. Or I just hold her phone for some of her things. It just does not seem real.
so I don't know thank you for staying with us thank you for supporting my kids and myself um, Grief is hard. Grief is scary. Losing your soulmate is uh, gut-wrenching. And I follow somebody who also talks about grief. They lost a partner to, uh, I believe it was cancer too, young. And she said, for all my people out there who are grieving the loss of a loved one on this Thanksgiving, I know it's going to be hard to see the thousands of people post their happy families. And it was hard. And on one end, I'm so grateful for all those people. And I want to jump through the screen and say, hold on tight. And then the other part of me is just so sad that I don't have that. I have it with my kids, of course. There's just such a piece missing. And I saw a video the other day of a 84-year-old woman. And they asked her about grief. She had remarried couple times I think in her life and they asked her about her first love and she lost him 60 years ago and they asked about him and she just broke down and started crying and it scared me because um, that she's been grieving that for 60 years and it still breaks her down I can tell now that you're never going to get to a point where you feel better. You're just going to get to, I mean, not that you're not going to feel better in the future, but what I mean is I, you're just going to kind of develop a new thing. I don't know if that makes sense. You just, you, you, it's a scab, it's a wound, it's, it's there. The scar is there, and it's not going to go anywhere, you know? I have a scar on my forehead, so does my son. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to always be there. You're just going to maybe look at the scar differently or feel differently sometimes. So, I'm nervous of the future. I'm nervous for tomorrow. I'm nervous for the rest of this evening. But this will give me a task. I have to edit this, put it up. Have to do it, right? So that's one thing I have to do. I have to organize, I have to straighten the house. Just trying to do these to-do list things. Um, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for supporting. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I can't. <laughs> Can't thank everyone enough. I don't know. Thank you for listening. I don't know if this video had a point, but I just wanted to share a little bit of how we're doing. Hopefully there's some cute clips that were before this of us going to Oregon. I think there are a few. And then the rest will just be this, but... <sighs> Man. Love you guys. Thank you for watching, and I will hopefully be on here sooner than, you know. I took the week to dedicate to Thanksgiving, and hopefully maybe we can film something middle of the week this week. we got a lot going on this week, so we'll see. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. Um...
pick up pennies, find ladybugs, look for butterflies, look for sparkle. Love you guys. Till next time. Bye, guys.